So for the final soap in this series, we are going to be playing with the actual infusion process that I went through for the spinach into the oil. So we can talk more about the beautiful color that we got, how that happened, all of the things that I went through in order to get it, and more probably because I like to chat and I will tell you more about all of that in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for another round of spinach-infused soapy fun, and we will be making today the third and final soap within the spinach series. Now, with this soap, I am going to be using no spinach in the lye solution, no spinach juice in the actual batters. I will be using just the spinach-infused oils that I've been using throughout this entire journey. But I did want to show you how that original infusion that I showed you at the first video ultimately went down and how I ended up incorporating it to get this beautiful green color. So that's what we are going to do. Additionally, we are going to be working with some very hot batter because I poured these all at between 130 and 140 degrees because I was in a rush, had to go, go, go. And I wanted to show you how I still managed to get a really pretty smooth bar even when the soap is getting really, really thick, really, really crazy, and how I get a really gorgeous sculpted top without any sort of weird, bumpy craziness, you know? So let's go to the video. Can you, get, you can get a visual for that because I sometimes, okay? We're gonna go. So today I am going to show you ultimately what I did in order to get the beautiful green that we saw in all of the oils for the first two soaps. And as I said before, I will be using just the, the spinach oil essentially itself in this particular soap. So I will be putting no spinach juice into the lye solution and just using this. Now what I did was I took all of the solid that came from the juicing process and I infused it into an olive oil. And then I let that sit for around four or five days. And then after that, and it had done all of its sitting stuff, I went and I took it to the blender and I blended it up really, really well with just using my stir stick for this application here, showing you what I did with everything. And then after that process, I will then strain it out to get as much of the solid mass as I possibly can before then incorporating it into my batter. Now the straining process takes a very long time because you know the oil has to do all of its CP CP and ultimately I ended up doing I believe two strains with this when it was all said and done. But what I wanted to do was get as much of the color out of the spinach solids as I possibly could because remember we got this beautiful bright super dark green uh, spinach juice for that we used within the lye solution for the first soap that we did in this series and within the oil and the traced batter itself for the second soap that we did in this series but both of those soaps still had this within it as well and so I wanted to play with this to see well a number of things I wanted to show you just first up how dark you can make it, how dark you can get your oils just from an infusion and a blend. And two, what we are looking at as far as the like the, the retention of the color is concerned. Because I did have a lot of people actually talk about in comments for the first two videos that when they use spinach, it will uh, fade over time or in their, you know, when they're using spinach, it will go dark brown or 
an orange color. And I thought, well, that's very interesting. I wonder why. And I know that it's been sort of said around the soap making forums for a very long time that chlorophyll, which spinach contains high amounts of, which we know because it's green, uh, will fade over time in the in the soap if it's if it's exposed to natural sunlight and well i mean yes that's true that is true because all natural colorants will fade over time if exposed to sunlight which can pose a bit of a problem if you are you know selling your soaps out at an event a fair etc and so forth so this is my second strain by the way removing the rest of the solids for all of it and as you can see it gets really really green so very fun with all of that for sure and then when i add it with the other colors or the other oils so the coconut and everything that we put into it it really takes on a lighter like paler green hue which i was completely in love with for all of the for the first two soaps anyway chlorophyll how come some people are getting it to be how come some people are getting soaps that are like green and others are, are reporting a brown or an orangish brown and i wanted to look into that because while I am not a plant scientist by any stretch of the imagination, I do find this process fascinating. And this was one of the reasons why I selected the, all of the botanicals that we're doing throughout, you know, May and June for these challenges, because I'm not super familiar with like plant biology. This is not my thing. And so I wanted to play with it within the realms of what I know about chemistry and see if I could make sense of things. And so chlorophyll, what we know is that there are two different types of chlorophyll, right? We have a chlorophyll A and a chlorophyll B. Both are considered pigments. And chlorophyll A is going to be the uh, wavelengths of your darker green. So dark blue and your dark red, which you end up with your darker green. Also get that, you have to get that scent, get that scent. You get that, the thing that I just did, you need to get that scent. It, it's amazing. I will tell you more about it at some point, uh, probably. Anyway, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll A, dark green, dark red. That's going to get you your dark green hue. Chlorophyll B uh, actually takes on the lighter blue and the reddish orange wavelengths. And so I started thinking about, well, how could it be that maybe some, some soaps are having more amounts of chlorophyll B than chlorophyll A and both exist within spinach? How do we determine what we're getting? You know what I mean? And so I started doing some looky-loos on the interwebs and found some very interesting journal articles, which I'm just going to talk about a little bit because, again, plant stuff and biotech, this is not my field, not my forte at all. But I want to explain sort of what they were using because they did use saponification for this. All right, so this is going to be a very simple pour. I did pour all these very, very hot, so that is why everything is super thick. I was on time crunches when I made all the spinach soaps, and so that's what we're looking at here. Spinach in and of itself, I have not found it to uh, accelerate trace at all. This was definitely a, a heat thing. I was soaping it, I think, over 130 degrees for all of these soaps, so that's why we're dealing with this. But ultimately, it's good because I want it to be, you know, firm really quickly so I can sculpt the top. Now, with this interesting article I found on um, PubMed, they were actually using saponification to essentially remove chlorophyll from crude oils to help out with, uh, I mean, essentially, it's they're looking for a better quality of transparent oils from, it looks like feedstock, but they were also focusing on canola oil within all of it and removing the chlorophyll. And so they use saponification to essentially extract the two. And so what does that mean? They, they put sodium hydroxide in it. That's what that means. Saponification is used all over the place. You know what I mean? And so they did this and they found that in extract, in using the, the sodium hydroxide within this, they were able to extract the chlorophyll and ultimately with their purposes they're resulting in a clear by a cleaner biomass anyway i will link that that doesn't have much to do with anything what i found was interesting about the article itself was that with the use of sodium hydroxide they were they were extracting and and actually able to separate out chlorophyll a and so i'm thinking with all of this that if you want to get a really good uh, if you want to get a really good green within your spinach that's going to not fade 
over time or not go orange right away, I would go with what we did initially, which was putting the spinach juice into the actual lye solution in place of the water. This is making sense in my head because it was such a beautiful, awesome green. I'm not 100% sure what it's going to do over time, however. And so we will, of course, be doing the lather test with all of these to see what it looks like, you know, a few weeks, three, four weeks after pouring, as well as I will continue to watch these, put them in direct sunlight and report back to you what the changes are. But I am thinking that if you're wanting the darker greens, using the spinach juice within the actual sodium hydroxide solution, allowing it to make that change within the sodium hydroxide solution, as opposed to putting it into traced or trace batter, which saponification is already doing its thing with the fatty acids, might be the ticket. This is my theory. We are theory crafting here. Also, this is how you smooth out really craggy tops. Just add water to it and you can smooth them out beautifully. See, that's awesome. Now I have to make sure to tell you before we go any further, hey, look at that. It's so green, it's so beautiful. I love everything about this. Obviously to topped with rose petals, such a firm, gorgeous bar. It was sea popped and gelled. That's not what I want to tell you though, because I tell you that all of the time, regardless. That scent that I was just talking about, or I was just like pointing at the, can anyway. It's from Sierra Candles. It's from their summer collection. It's like Island Odyssey. You have to get this. You have to get this scent. It is the most delicious scent I have ever smelled in my life. It's all things summer. It's so perfect. Uh, what does it smell like? It smells like perfect summer vibes. It doesn't smell like suntan oil. It doesn't smell like coconuts. It doesn't smell like uh, fruits. It doesn't smell. It just smells like summer. It's so good. I can't describe it. I, I'm sure that the description on Sierra Candles website is perfect, but I'm not going to read that for you. I'm going to tell you to go and actually look at it yourself because I want you to go to Sierra Candles, read the description for yourself and buy it because it is one of the best smells sense that I have had for all of 2024. And that's saying something because there are a crap ton of fragrance companies that are just sending me their scents these days. They just do that. They just, they just send me stuff. And most of the time I, I smell them and I'm like, cool, awesome. I'm not, you know, I don't, it's not blowing me away. You know what I mean? So I don't make videos on them because I still love Sierra Candles also very much. And that's not to say there aren't awesome other companies out there because they're super duper are. But I have been sent as far as, you know, like, I guess, creator swag or whatever, probably 200 cents across, I don't know, 14 or 15 different companies just this year, just in 2024. And this one is far and away, hands down the best scent that I've, that I've seen. And I know summer is already upon us, but you should get it and make your like later in the summer soaps out of this, seriously. And it pairs so beautifully with this because it has a little bit of a clean smell to it. And it, but it's still very, very like summer. I, I can't explain it again. Go to the website. I bet, I bet Dana did a great job explaining it. That's all. That's, that's all I have to say about that. But anyway, so this soap, Beautiful green, absolutely gorgeous. We have a little bit of a glycerin reverse going on with all of this. And this is what it looks like just using the spinach oil infusion itself. And as we can say, see, we don't have any sort of little bits of matter within the actual base of the soap, suggesting that there were extra solids from the spinach. But even if there were extra solids from the spinach, I think it's totally fine in this application, obviously, because when you're making cold process soap, you're not really dealing with any sort of potentials for rotting like you would with a melt and pour glycerin base, including something like this in there. So we're all good with that. But as you can see, very, very smooth. Took two uh, strains essentially to get it like that. And the top, absolutely gorgeous. A very stunning top for sure with this even though the batter was so incredibly thick and weird and not working right so there's a nice little hack on how to get your your you know tops really smooth and awesome so you can still sculpt them and make them beautiful and they don't end up looking funny when it's all said and done just dip whatever thing you're using to sculpt your tops into water and put it on there help smooth it out and then you have beautiful perfection at the top 
which I'm not mad about. I'm not mad about any part of this, honestly. This entire soaping process with the spinach has been delightful. I love spinach. I incorporate it into my diet all the time. And so incorporating to my soaps was just kind of a slam dunk. Now, as far as what it's going to do performance wise, still unclear. I don't know if it's really going to be much of a benefit overall as far as, you know, better lather or better moisturizing properties. We do know what the properties of spinach are topically, but again, this is a rinse off product. So ultimately what I'm thinking is for now, it's a really gorgeous, just soap and a good natural colorant. But again, time will tell with that one as far as how long this color stays. Okay, so first up, right off the top, I love this scent so freaking much, so freaking much. It is amazing. The Sierra Candle scent, you have to get it. It is so good. Second, just go get it. Just go get it. Go get it. Just get it. You should get this scent. That's all. That Go get it. It's so good. I, can't, I, I got so happy. I'm happy thinking about it. Get the scent. That's all. Two, also, third, I don't know where we are anymore, the top of the soap. Yeah, totally. When your soap gets all weird and thick and it's just, I, I'm in there like sculpting it with my fingers and stuff. Yeah, just take some water and smooth all the edges out while you're sculpting your top and it looks gorgeous and always sea pop it. I know people get really freaked out about sea popping it when it's already hot. They think it's going to expand and volcano and crack and everything. And A, sometimes that can happen. Two, I have that happen like once every 1000 batches when something like this happens. And see, if it does happen, that's what the end pieces are for. You take it and you fill in the cracks and the holes and everything's fine. You know what I mean? Just put on low heat, like a heating pad, to make sure that it gels really nicely and all those little rough bits inside will smooth out nicely. It'll be gorgeous soap. Speaking of gorgeous soap, all three of these soaps are super gorgeous and I am looking forward to the lather test. That is coming up next. We are going to be doing the lather test on this and seeing what all of the hullabaloo is about with spinach soaps. So stick around for that. Like, comment, subscribe, share, do those things. That would be awesome. That helps me stay motivated. You know who really helps me stay motivated though? The Sudzers. So thank you for being a Sudzer. You've liked, you've subscribed, you've commented, you've shared, you've become members and you have joined the, the Discord community. You guys are my people and I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being here in the Sudzer community. What do you think we should tackle next? You don't really get an opinion because I already have them ready to go. We're all done with spinach soaps for now. We still have to do some spinach cosmetics, but we also have some really fun fruits and vegetables and all kinds of things that we're yet to tackle for the rest of May, for all of June. It's going to be a good time. Thank you for being here and for being excited along with me to learn all the soapy science things because not all of you like that, you know, but I, I know that the Sudzers do. That's why you're here. So thank you. I am out of here. A uh, crazy weekend. Hope you guys are having the best, just the best time. But I will see you guys all next time tomorrow, today, I don't know, for the lather tests and another round of spinach infused soapy fun. Bye.